Hi there, my name's Ed Hicks. I'm a banjo teacher based in London. I'm making this video as a piece of uh, support material for um, covering stuff that we would have normally done in our first lesson on the banjo. Um, so this is very beginner's introduction to claw hammer, how you use the right hand, which is the hardest bit about claw hammer. This is what we would have done normally in lesson one. So um, if you're gonna play claw hammer banjo, uh, you need to hold your hand in this sort of strange idiomatic sort of c-shaped position like this so your thumb is away from your fingers and the whole hand stays quite rigid you're going to pick a finger either your first finger or your second finger and we strike downwards on the string with the front of the nail so you're going to take one of those fingers we're going to go to the first string the strings are numbered one two three four five from the one nearest the floor to the short one nearest to your head and we're going to strike down with the front of the nail, either your first finger or your middle finger, your second finger. And we're trying to get a sound like this. Now, if you hear that, that should sound nice and clear. You should be able to hear the pitch on it. We don't want the sort of slippy sound. We don't want a vague sound. We want this sort of sound. Now, one of the ways I found you get the sound is rather than making the main direction of movement across the banjo head, it's a bit like we're pushing into the banjo head, maybe even ultimately at a sort of 45 degree angle. So pushing in a bit, not like this, not going across into the banjo head, maybe somewhere in between those two directions. So we, another way of thinking of it is if you put the nail, of your finger against the string, hold it there and you put some tension on the string, then you release it. To me, that's how you get that knock sound. Okay, I'm just going to keep my computer awake. I'm getting emails, popular, busy, busy, busy all the time here. Even when I'm making videos, there's still emails coming in. Um, so let's try that knock thing together. What I would do, a good way to do this, is really slow. We would go knock, rest, knock, rest. Do this with me. Knock, rest, knock, rest. You don't have to tap your knee. I'm just doing that so we can keep the time. Rest, knock, rest. In fact, knock, I should be bringing my hand back up on that rest beat to reset. That's the best moment to bring it up. It should be going down, then up, down, then up. Once you've done that on the first string a few times, you can try doing it on the second string. Second string's a bit harder because you have to have a bit more control to not hit the first string. You might drive the nail through and it might land on the first string. That's okay, that's fine. So let's try the second string. We go, knock, rest, knock, rest, knock, rest, knock. Third string, knock, rest, knock, rest, knock, rest, knock. Fourth string, Rest, knock. Rest, not a very good one there. Knock. Rest, try and keep it nice and clear. Keep your focus. So make sure every knock counts. If you have to stop the video and go a bit slower to work this out, that's totally fine. First string. Knock. Rest. Knock. Rest. Knock. Rest. Second string, knock, rest, knock, rest, knock, rest, knock. Third string, rest, rest, rest. Fourth string. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with the brush. The brush motion is very similar to the knock. The hand just comes down. It's easier in some ways. We just brush three or four strings like that. And try to let gravity, let your hand drop. I've been thinking about that a lot recently. So it's brush, reset, brush, reset, brush, reset, brush, reset. Brush, reset. Brush, reset. Brush, reset. 
decent. Now, people may have already noticed those who've already played a bit of claw hammer banjo, or just paying attention, that my thumb is already landing on the fifth string. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. At the end of the brush, the thumb should land on the fifth string. And if your hand is sufficiently relaxed and you're using gravity, as you should, just to let your hand drop, it's almost as if landing on that fifth string stops you from falling on the floor. If you go... You just fall on the floor if you're totally relaxed. Um, ways you might want to do that is by keeping the thumb close in to the banjo head, like that. Um, and what I'm going to do is when I land on that fifth string, um, I need to use the thumb to kind of bounce my hand back up. And that's when my hand starts going up again. So I go down, up, down, up. And it's like I'm exaggerating the motion, but we're pushing up. I think it's quite important. You might not notice this, and even some people who play might not realise explicitly they're doing it, but this means you're moving down and up. On every beat you move down, on every up beat you move up. Down beat down, up beat up. So it's like one and two and three and four and. Now the next thing we do is we would combine this with the knock. The rhythm we're going to go for is knock, brush, thumb, knock, brush, thumb. Long, quick, quick, long, quick, quick. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and boom, chaga, boom, chaga, boom, chaga. They're all just different ways of saying the same rhythm. I found, for reasons that... um. Unclear to me. A lot of people find it easier to get into this groove by starting on the brush, even though the bar line goes knock, brush, thumb, knock, brush, thumb. I think because there's a big stress on the brush and emphasis, it's easier to start on the brush. So we're going to do that just to get into our groove. So we're going to make the brush the first thing we do. We're going to go brush down over three strings, land the thumb, play the thumb, drop down to knock, reset. Brush, thumb, up, reset. So there's that space after the knock where we reset. Brush, thumb, up, and brush, thumb, up, and brush, thumb, up. Can you see how my hand is moving down? Go for the second string on our neck, it's going to be harder. Third string. Fourth string. string and 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 second string and and fourth string Third string, sorry. Oops, nearly missed. Third string. And fourth string. And 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 
my screen live whilst I make this video because it keeps turning off professional. Um, so that's my introduction to how to play claw hammer banjo. I hope that's useful to you, um, especially if you've just done a lesson with me or been to one of my workshops. Um, if it is useful, don't forget to like the video or subscribe to the channel. I've been trying to make more um, banjo related content over this year. Um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Enjoy. Remember to take it slow. Think about clear knocks, complete brushes, thumb landing on the fifth string, down and up motions. Those are the key things.